Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program, and I thought we would do something a little bit different today. Uh, normally I give you a nice little post commentary of all the stuff that I've done and the wonders that I have produced, but today I want to be producing those wonders, so I'd like to take you on a journey as we go and develop a load of craft that I wish to take on my Mammoth Juna trip. Um, I'm aiming pretty high actually for um, my first Juna trip. Uh, I, I've got off the top of my head, I want to build a couple of probes, a glider, a rover and a land and return vessel plus all the stuff to get that there. So um, yeah, there's quite a lot of stuff to do. But I thought we might start work on the ro on not the rover, on the um, the glider first. To be honest, the first thing I think it's really gonna need, if I can find it here, is something that we've not bought yet. To the science! <laughs> One of the best things about you guys coming on this journey with me is you're going to find out just exactly how shambolic my entire system is. You know, I, I go and start building something and I'm like, oh no, I need this and off we go to get that. Uh, so the thing I want in particular uh, is the uh, docking port because, hey, we will need to attach it to this vessel, we need to drop it from this vessel and, you know, we need nice ways. And maybe we can bring it back, maybe using some Infinity Glider technology. I mean, I don't really want to use that because that is like blatantly a glitch, but uh, I don't know, who knows. So for that reason, I'm buying this. Um, now, something else I want, as just as appeared, is we want nuclear propulsion. So that means I'm definitely going to need this heavy lifting technology and, hey, heavy lifting technology. Who doesn't, who doesn't want the heavy, te heavy lifting technology? Wow, you know when you say the same thing over so many times it starts to sound just a little bit dull in your head? Heavy lifting technology. Okay, I also want this Delta Wing because Delta Wings are the best, or at least I think they are anyway. One thing I did forget to do was get this uh, nuclear propulsion, so let's do that. Okay, I'm going to save some of these sciences for things that I, I, I forget that I need. I mean, like, we want the, the chair, we want the science. Parachutes? Do we want parachutes? I think we're going to want parachutes. I mean, this is a, a drag of... 1.7 or 170 even. Wow, so they're even earlier on than I thought they were. But here we go. This is the one I was looking for. So um, their fully deployed drag is actually 500 here. What? That's like so much better than this. It's not 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 even funny. Oh, well, stuff those ones. We're just going to carry on with the radial ones. Wow. All right. Well, there we go. Learn something new today. Uh, yeah, look, so let's get back to, to like doing what we're supposed to be doing. Hey. <laughs> All right, so as promised, opening up with the uh, the docking port here. Now, what I envisage here is a kind of a, a pole going down with wings stuck on it and then stuff underneath. That's, that's a little bit vague, uh, I know. The, the stuff's kind of like where the Kerbal sits and where um, where the probe control is going to be because we want this to be both autonomous and with the ability to take Kerbals, of course. I mean, why wouldn't we? Uh, we're going to put in a load of science stuff as well. Um, I, I think that's kind of getting on for the sort of stuff we we need. So let's let's just kind of pick out some bits we want. Uh, do I have access to the I beam? That's that's really one of the things that I wanted. Okay, so to get access to this, what I've had to do is buy the claw. That's that's no biggie. I just wanted to, to be able to get some of this stuff. And mo most importantly, these winches here are quite important to the plan that I have in my head for what we want to do here. So I reckon this is sort of the thing that we want to buy here. Pow. Okay, so I don't want that that way. Um, now I'm going to have to spend the obligatory five hours pressing different buttons trying to find which one it is that does the rotation in the order I want, and then it's the last one I hit anyway. Uh, and then we want Delta Wings here, which I think, if you ask me, gives a beautiful hand glidery effect. I mean, just look at that. Isn't that amazing? And if you ask me, those are too close together. Now, there are a few things we need to do to make sure that this doesn't happen like this. But the first is definitely we need to put some el elverons, el elevators, I don't know. Well, however you want to call these. They say in the game they're elverons, but uh, that just sounds really clunky in my mouth. And the other thing we need is like vertical stabilization. Now, I could put wings on, but one thing I have been leaning towards quite a lot recently is using stuff like this and then just swinging them around again got to find the right controller. Now that's no good because it clips up through the top of that. I still reckon that's going to clip horrendously. Um, it's a shame we don't have any smaller ones. Okay so what I've decided to do is I'm going to stick with this thing but we're going to use our wonderful gadgets up here and we're going to offset this down a little bit because that's pretty much <laughs> the only option available. So even said that that's I think that's going to go well beyond our landing structure. Now obviously we want like landing gear on the bottom here because um, we need to make a landing and I have found with a little bit of experimentation and stuff that we can land like this oh, that's, that's horrendous okay so we're gonna have to go for a different plan uh, as with all space good spacecraft design it's a very iterative process you build a bit you go does this work you go no and you figure out what else you can do now one of the things I've noticed here is our center of mass is a lot higher than our center of lift now 
Uh, but that's okay because we want to put a whole load of structures in underneath for like where our kerbal is going to sit and stuff like that. So let's deal with that now. Hopefully the suspension on the landing gear won't mean we completely wipe those out. I know that's what the testing process is for. We will figure these things out as we go along. Right, the next thing I need is another structural piece because we need to get something like this on underneath. Now I'm not sure whether I want to go for a full plate or something a little bit more subtle. Quite a good look, but I'm not sure whether this will fit in here. Oh, look at that, perfect. Almost as if it was built for the job. So we don't want to quite push it into that bar, but that, that's pretty good. Yeah, I like the look of that. I like the look of that a lot. Uh, another thing I wanted to do was put a probe body on there. I think an octoprobe will be nice. Now, obviously, we've got this orientation issue where it doesn't want to really stick on the front here. Now, I think that pushes it backwards. So if we stick this on here, and then we're going to do some horrendous stuffs with this offset. Well, I didn't realise this probe body was quite as thick as it was. It's definitely a force to be reckoned with on the front there, isn't it? That's offset just far too much. Um, so this is going to serve two two purposes, and I hope it's strong enough. What's its crash tolerance? Uh, 12 metres per second? That's good. If we're landing faster than that, more things are going to fail than that anyway. So we should be alright. Is this one much thinner? It's not really, is it? That's, that's a bit of a shame. I could really have done with uh, the next probe core on in the system. Now, obviously, we're going to have issues about how we're going to get in the air and stuff like that. And I'm pretty sure we're going to have structural issues. Um, things are going to fall apart. Now, for getting up in the air, what I'm going to actually do is make a little system here. So if I put one of these connecting nodes on the bottom voila now some of you already know what i'm going to be doing when i when i do that some of you are going to be confused uh and i think we're going to call this um mr hang one oh wow well, caps lock and right this isn't a serious test this is just finding out whether this probe core's on the right way around or not and yes everything seems to be looking all right uh if we put on our sas and pull ourselves up this is how we're going to be landing. Uh, I don't like how close those are, but can I push them through the floor? We can't. So we've got to land at like perfect level altitude and that that doesn't scream like it's going to happen to me. I don't know, we'll have to figure something out. I'll have to see if any of the uh, flight controls are any smaller, um, but yeah. But yeah. All right, so that's the basic function done. Uh, there are a few problems here, like the these control surfaces are like just too far too, too big look at them they're, they're, they're just far too big but i'm not sure what we can do about that maybe put them at some sort of like angle so, something like that maybe i'm not sure if this is going to give us any vertical control at all or just be like wasteful i don't know i i literally don't know but that 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 appears to give us some more uh some more ground clearance and that that is one of the things i'm really worried about the other thing is we need some solar power on this now there's a, a few ways i could go about doing this but i think these fixed panels are really gonna have to be the way to do it because well, if we try and extend any um, any of like the boom type ones, we're going to have all sorts of issues with like atmospheric drag trying to rip them off. I oh, know I don't like the way that they clip together there. We'll uh, we'll do this, and then these ones on the back here can catch the back sunlight, and then everything should, hopefully, if like you know I've figured things out right, which isn't very likely, but should hopefully give us enough power that should give us all the coverage most of the time the sun is going to be above us if the sun is not above us something has gone much more wrong than we're running out of power so yeah brilliant so that was one half of this dual system that I want to do. The next half is to make some sort of launching rover. Now, what do I mean by a launching rover? You would have seen that I'd on the underside, I put that um, winch port. Now, that was for one of these particular winches here. I'm not sure whether I wanted to make it computer controlled or whether I want to have um, a person on board. Well, obviously, I want a Kerbal on board of some description. But what, what, what system do we use? I mean, I, I've, I've used a landing, landing can before. So this is the most uh, basic design for the Friendly Helpful Rover that I can think of. In fact, that's going to be the name. Yeah, Friendly Helpful Rover, um, including the same sort of um, offset and rotated trick on the on this uh, probe core here to make sure that this is facing forward. Because if uh, uh, those of you that will remember uh, Tonto, the, the, the little rover we did for Minmus, this doesn't give the control that you want for a rover. So yeah, th this is literally the basic design. I'm not sure how we would get it down to, to Juna at the, off the top of my head at the moment, but I want to show you what I have in mind. So if we launch this, this vessel off, uh, once again, even though it has a lot of batteries, solar power would have helped. And we're just gonna park this off here somewhere. I, th I think here it looks really good. Oh, 
All right, now what we wanted was to take this plane here and turn it around ever so slightly. Oh, I love this control here. Look at that, brilliant. Uh, in fact, we're gonna roll off the edge. Gotta love the aerodynamics model. All right, so everything should be set up for me to be able to show you what I actually have in mind for being able to do this. So if we wander over to the, to the thing, oh no, someone didn't put any brakes on. Jeb, you should know better than that. Okay, so if we wander over here and we grab the connector, pow, and then we've got to wander all the way over there. Oh, it's such a long walk. Let's let's get going. Oh wow, it's even longer than that. Sweet. So we want the line to be pretty much as far out as possible, so we have as much much time to play with as possible. So we're going to plug it undocked, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're going to do. Uh, I don't really like the way that this is so far uh, diagonal, but we'll, we'll work on it. So I'm going to board here, and we're going to point. No, are we not going to point up and out? Are we out of power? can't be out of power we're not out of power why do i have no ah because i'm in docking mode docking mode useful for some things normally just a pain in the bum we're going to look at oh i don't know 20 degrees i reckon swap over to the rover and we're going to go go oh the brake heel brakes are on go and this should hopefully if we can get sufficient speed yes look at that look at that now obviously the um atmosphere on juna is a lot thinner but we should be able to do stuff like this i hope and once again i'm in docking mode so that's no good uh, i doubt we're going to do anything but mainly this is for landing practice so here goes we're going to put our gears down um, i haven't quick saved it so literally jebediah's life is in the balance right now i don't like the way his uh, helmet clips through the roof though maybe we can do something about that at some point so we're going to try and just slowly bring ourselves in so we're coming in at quite a speed i'm not i'm not overly impressed with how fast we're doing um maybe we can touch our wheels down to slow us down I, I don't know let's leave our brakes on and see what happens i mean we're going at 20 odd miles uh, 20 meters per second down at the floor here it's not great so landing very much an issue very much an issue everyone's dead no no just the front okay let's recover this vessel okay so the troubles with that one were many then varied mainly we've not got enough room here like th this was smashing into the floor too hard uh jebediah's um helmet was going through there so i've got a few ideas of what we can do like so the first one is that if we take these yeah and twist them that way around in fact oh look it's doing this for me brilliant uh that then gives us room for the tank here that i was worried about clipping into that that was my big big worry there i'd also then like to move this up here maybe that's a better version i'm still worried about this slamming into the floor though so i think what we'll do is we'll take this off and we will give it a little bit of um support like can we do this will that stick there it won't stick there yeah brilliant i mean what could go wrong hey what could go wrong i mean i really want to put a skid pad on this let's let's move this up so, offset up a lot Does that look better okay so that's put a few of the changes into practice i'm not overly sure about these but let's have a look at how how heavy this craft is 1.1 1 .1. now i've got to pay attention to how heavy this craft is because what i want to do is strap this and the helpful rover on opposite sides of the ship from each other uh so not only do i have to try and make this the same weight as the rover or the rover the same weight as this rather uh i should probably think about putting extra things on this side of the vessel as well like i wouldn't mind putting uh, some attachment points on this so over here if we look in the the structural bits oh, i'm sorry it wasn't structural it was utility so we see these struct strut endpoints here we could probably use these to like fasten this oh fasten this more securely to the main vessel um but that will mean that we're going to put like some containers on the main vessel yeah uh this could also use um possibly some power is one of the things that i've noticed is missing do you reckon we can actually ah oh, we only got the small one that's a shame that's a great shame maybe we can um put them on here let's put two like that so this is mr hang version two should we uh give it a go so for test number two we're taking rich mel kerman out today um basically jeb's jeb's got a little cold bless him uh, and with Rich Mills, uh valiantly stood up to take take his place. Um, I, I think Jeb was a little bit scared from the the last test. Uh, there was very close to his death there. Uh, I really like the way this just kind of holds itself up here. I think one of the things that we really need to put on is maybe a little skid pad at the bottom of this thing. Um, we'll, we'll give it a go at some point. Am I too far away to connect to this? Let's let's try this now. Uh, so we plug on docked and we get into the the boat. 
And we're just going to roll with it. So it's taking a bit more to get off the floor this time. Um, to be expected, we have put some like structural girders and stuff on. But we are now building up some speed. This is good. This is good. This is exactly what we're trying to look for. But 16 meters per second seems to be the maximum speed we can get this up to, which is a little bit, a little bit rubbish, if you ask me. Okay, so this is coming up to the top of the arc. Let's disconnect. Do a little spin. Oh, it, this is a slow vessel, but it's quite nice. It's quite nice. I'm, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Let's see how close we can get to. The space center uh, I, I'm liking how we fit underneath there better though there is still a bit of clippage to worry about that, that's fine that's that's fine the, the real thing to worry about is what happens when we hit the floor here uh, maybe we could put like one of these as a skid pad on the bottom um, it's looking quite nice there so we're coming down at 16 meters per second that's it's a reasonable speed these landing gear are massive compared to the vessel themselves so here we go coming in tight I'm gonna I'm just gonna keep pulling up to about 10 degrees and hopefully um, that should bring us in for a nice soft landing now I have been told Juna is one of the most rugged of planets i.e. it's got like lots of stuff to crash into uh, lots of hills to crash into like like this little thing here uh, and that's not what we're after we're after a nice soft flat landing so this this might not be the best plan for Juna but I think maybe we should take ourselves over to the grasslands so it takes a long time to stop a long time to stop but once the brakes are engaged Oh yeah, look at that. That's perfect. That That is brilliant. Uh, I didn't find out exactly how heavy this vessel is. This should be fairly light. 1.73. So yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's that's comparable to the weight of the hang, uh, hang glider. The hang glider is almost exactly one ton. Uh, and this seems to be like nearly two. So we could we could stick another one ton vessel on the side. Possibly even a probe. So like this, these two are exploring Juna. Perhaps we could throw a ghillie probe on the side uh, for the weight of a ton unfortunately that's all the time that i've got for testing so whilst you're watching me try and mount this uh, hang glider on the back of the rover i'd like to say thank you very much for joining me for this testing process uh if you could leave me some feedback about the different show format type uh this this obviously was a different different way from what i normally do things if you could let me know whether you liked it or not that would be most helpful but until next time when we're going to work on the probe and getting some science and stuff on these and possibly even getting stuff into orbit yeah, I, I will see you then. <laughs> we'll do that. Bye!